No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, a long awaited episode, important episode for the town. Okay. Money Sign Suede is in the building. What's the deal? What's the deal? How y'all doing, man? Cool. Why th- Why this take so long to get going, man? You've been dubbing me for a minute. Shit, I've been going through a lot of bullshit. Yeah? Yeah, I've been going through a lot of bullshit. I just feel like I wasn't even ready to do an interview, feel me? But you could do 10 interviews with Duno. <laughs> nah, nah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Five say cheese joints, couple Cam Capones. I can't even keep up. Nah, nah, nah. Nah? It was about that time, though. I had to come fuck with you. I appreciate it, no cap. No, no doubt. I'm very excited to have you in here. I feel yeah, like you, yeah. you... All right. Do you feel like the number one brown rapper from L.A. right now? Shit, hell yeah. If it ain't me, it's, it's, the, it's the little homie Peso. But mm. if, it ain't, if it ain't us, there's nobody else. Right. And how long so, how long you even really feel like you've been at it? Like, only, what, a couple years that you've actually been really truly known, right? Maybe even like a year and a half? Well, I've been truly known for like two years. Okay. For like two years now, I guess. But I was locked up for a whole year. Mm. Yeah, so I've been out here for like a year and shit with the whole... Little clout and shit. Right. So how much has your life changed since, you know, just considering where you're coming from? And we'll get more into depth about all that. But, like, I just want, I'm trying to get a, a read on where your mentality is at these days. She, uh, she's changed, though, for sure. Like, the whole clout shit changed everything for me. Fucking everything, like, from friends to shit, everything for me. So mm. it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's just cool, though, for me. And how so old are you at this point? I'm 21. 21. Yeah. Goddamn. It's crazy. 21. Duno's 20. Duno's 20? 21? 20? 22. 22, yeah. yeah. Fuck nah, it. Nah, he's not 20. Fuck him. We'll give him whatever age we want. He can't <laughs> say Duno. shit. Shout, Shout out Duno. Shout out Duno. Duno. Okay. All right, so tell me a little bit about uh, your, your upbringing. I want to I get into how the city raised you. Shit, well, uh, I'm an L.A. baby for me, 323. But uh, I grew up my first 10 years in South Central. When I was 10, I moved to Huntington Park. Okay. So, yeah, that's that. But... I've been I've been all over the place and shit though. You know, like I moved to the Bay too when I was younger for like fucking six months. What age were you when you were in the Bay? I was young. I was young. I was like seven. Oh, seven, okay. eight. Right. Yeah, I was only out there for a bit. But you think of yourself as being from Huntington Park, or you consider yourself to be kind of from there in South Central, or what? I just really sound for Huntington Park. Right. Because I really like I grew up my teenage years in Huntington Park, so that's what really made me for me. Right. Okay. Um. So what were your parents like? What were your parents like? My parents? Yeah. Shit. I grew up just with my moms and shit for me. Okay. So you never met your dad? Yeah, I met my dad. I grew up with him like till I was like seven. Okay. And that's one of the reasons why I moved to the Bay too when I was seven, cause what's he call it? That's when he uh they separated, he left to the bay, and we went after him and shit, and then shit didn't work out again, so we moved back. Right. To my mom and shit. Damn, okay. And so you've been out of contact with him ever since then? Nah. I talked to him, I talked to him now and shit, but it's never been like for me, uh I still talk to him, and right. ever, ever since I like fucking um they separate, I still talk to him and shit. Like once a year, I'll see him once a year. He'll come visit down to LA. Right. You know. What's the vibe though? Do you resent him for how that shit worked out as you're a kid, or do you or do you look at it like you understand being a, a man now? Shit, I understand. For me, I understand. That's my that's my pops. No matter what, I'm not gonna say fuck that nigga. For me, he's cool as fuck. He's cool as fuck. My dad, I be drinking with him, getting drunk, all that shit. Really? Hell yeah. Oh shit. He's cool. You now, get wasted? Like, huh? You get wasted? I mean, yeah. Getting drunk is what wasted is what white people call it, I nah, guess. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I drink a little bit. I had stopped. I had stopped. I was sipping in for a long ass minute, but I just stopped and shit. I'm, I'm back to drinking liquor and shit. Okay. You think that's better for you than the lean? Uh, that shit's nasty. That mm. shit's way nastier now. Coming back from the lean, like the lean is all sweet for me. Mm. And just drinking fucking liquor is like, fuck, shit nasty, but it, put, it puts in work. Well, okay. Let's compare the two, though. Liquor's way cheaper. Yeah, way lean cheap. is like the most expensive drug yeah. habit you could ever have. Yeah. True. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I fucking spend hell of money on lean. It's just stupid. But shit. okay, the fucking lean hangover is. I mean, you you get grumpy as fuck. You might feel like shit, but I don't know. To me, an alcohol hangover is the fucking worst. Oh yeah, I hate. I hate. That's one thing I hate. Fucking nigga, being drunk, waking up the next day like dizzy as fuck, wanting to throw up. That shit nasty. Yeah, that's terrible. Nasty. Lean is more just like you're. You're still sleepy. Like, can't like get up really. You can't like get your energy where you want it in the morning because you're yeah. still moving so slow. You sibling? You used to sibling? No, I do not. <laughs> no, I do not want you to DM me about pints. <laughs> Shit. Um 
<laughs> when you blow up as a rapper though does that totally change like the, the amount of lean that you could potentially get your hands on like all of a sudden you got all these like cool ass little lean dealers who just got a script off their grandma and they want to serve you yeah shit i guess it's too just you just like get more pop and everybody sipping lean when you're like oh, like just come around it for me right it just be around this shit right i'm good off that shit already i've been sober for fucking two two three months now oh, okay because one time I remember I was talking to Desto Dub and he was breaking down how expensive it is to become a rapper. And when he was breaking it down, he's factoring in like how much lean and weed you're going to need for these studio sessions. And that makes it really expensive. I'm thinking this is so funny that you can't even imagine a world where a rapper does not have hella weed and lean on them. Yeah. I feel like you need that shit sometimes. Why'd you stop? What, what, what's been going on the last two or three months? Well, I stopped. I stopped because I was fucking... Loki, I was about to like overdose, like really was that bad. bad? Yeah, like the homie had to like take me to the like hospital and shit. Wow. But I was like, well, I was up all night drinking lean and I was a couple pills. Yeah, were you popping beans, perks and shit? Nah, I was popping like Zans and shit. Zans? <laughs> yeah. That's just gonna make it so much worse. <laughs> yeah, I know. Lean. So the one time I have it and lean Zans together, actually, it's been a bunch of times, but the one that stands out, in my mind was just a race. The homies had to drive me home. It just fucking completely like just zapped my brain. That shit's crazy. I was, I was doing that shit like every day, all night, like all the pills and drinking lean. And then that night, I was up to like six in the morning. Fucking by the end of the studio session, like I felt like shit. Like I got stuck. I couldn't even like. I was having like a seizure type of shit. Really? Yeah. And then it got bad. Then, huh? You had to go to the hospital or anything? Like the homies took me, but when we got there, I snapped out of it. Really? We just didn't walk in. Right. But ever since then, I was like, fuck, that shit felt nasty, though. I felt like I was going to die, so I just stopped. Yeah, it's probably good you figure that out now because there's so many rap legends that just end up having to quit. And yeah, like A lot too, of times they're 30, you know, 35, and they've already spent like a fucking million dollars on lean, and they fucking their, their health is all fucked up from it. Yeah, I'm just smoking weed now and shit. I smoke a gang of weed every day. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you used to do coke, right? Yeah, I used to do coke too. Back in the day when you were mad young or like more recently, like when you were doing lean and shit? Nah, it was back in the day when I was young. I stopped too because I had a bad trip off of coke too. Bad trip? Like, not bad trip, but like that bad, like that shit. I was, about, I went to the hospital for that. Really? Too. Yeah, like I actually went to the hospital. You just did too much and you just... I did too much. It was 7 in the morning, woke up straight to do coke, empty stomach. Really? Yeah, I was doing gang coke, smoking back to back. Doing a gang, I was smoking a blunt, doing coke, couple lines, couple bumps. <laughs> For me and then and then um i just got dizzy i lost my vision wow i couldn't see for like a minute like my heart was bumping all fast and shit and then yeah the homie called her, uh the ambulance damn <laughs> what they tell you in the hospital they start guilt tripping you about it uh, they gave me like this one like like drink and shit that shit like like calm me down yeah drink some more lean <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't lean. I don't know what it was, but that shit calmed me down, though. For sure. Um, all right, so so when you were young and everything, like, when when do you feel like you really kind of got exposed to what was going on, like, the real L.A. lifestyle for kids? Obviously, you're a kid up to a certain point, and then you start just seeing shit and getting into more and more shit. What was that like for you? What do you mean, though? <laughs> like when you when you, like when you hop off the porch per se is the way that they always say it in oh, interviews. Right. When you start to really be outside and shit. For me, I don't know. She, she like, she's always been outside. Like I don't know, it's just regular. Like for me, like I'm not gonna say, oh, I was 13 when I hopped out the porch. Like nah, shit. We've been fucking around. I don't know since forever. For, for me. Right. Yeah. But was there like a time period where you really started to get into shit, get Probably into like, doing crimes and stuff? Probably, yeah, when I was, like, like high school, like, when I dropped out, like, 15, 16, 15. That's when you started trying to figure out how to make some money or what? Yeah, it started, like, little, going on little, little stupid missions and shit. Mm. For me, like, stupid money, fucking pocket change and shit, like, for me, like. Right. Stupid shit. Like, what would you do, rob somebody on the street? All rob that. a liquor store? Been, been done, all that. <laughs> for real? Yeah, <laughs> growing up, but for me. Right. So when you first get locked up? Uh, my first got locked up. Like when I hit the county, I was 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. What they gave you for? For the fucking uh, bullshit. Uh, some bullshit, bro. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Carjacking. Ah. Well, it was like not even carjacking. It was like 
that's what they were like accusing me of type shit. Really? I had a homie who got hit with the bait car. With a what? The bait car. With that show that they used to have on TV where they would leave a car on and like just leave it on a street yeah. in like a hood. And then somebody inevitably like walks up and just hops in and starts driving it away. Yeah, my kids were stupid, dog. That shit was dumb. Like it was like that, but you fucking it was just wired like, the car up yourself. Nah, I don't. I didn't even get in the car. It was just some stupid, oh. like some. I was just talking shit to some fool in the car and called the cops. on them. Okay. Some shit. Well, how long were you locked up? Uh, a year. Really? Yeah. And so what was but that? I got like? I got time off. Like I was really supposed to do like a year and a half. Uh huh. But then the whole COVID shit came through. Really? And I only did a year. And they let you out? Yeah, like six months early. Like, I got a big-ass kick. They was kicking a lot of people out. That's crazy. Yeah, I got lucky, no cap. Okay, so that's why you were locked up at that point. All right, now yeah. I understand. And so what, you're on, like, probation right now, on parole? So you, you, you just got to keep I'm your nose clean? You still are? Yeah. So you got to keep your nose clean? Uh, like, yeah. Like, you know, you got to stay out of trouble? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> yeah. For but sure. I'm, I'm on this ankle monitor. It's just strict. Right. Yeah. Damn. So you could come here. What, what did it say? You had like a 50 mile radius nah, from your house? I'm just like LA County. Where it's like, I just can't leave the LA County. Right. Can't go to Riverside County, Orange County. Feel me? If you had a show or something, though, you could get permission. Nah. Really? Not right now. Wow. It's just strict. Damn. So I caught like new cases after that. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm on a two belt right now type shit. So you came home and then what happened? Came home, chilling. I was cooling. Then I caught a case again in December. And what was that? This is in Riverside. What the fuck you doing in Riverside? I had a show out there. <laughs> I had a show out there. I we was leaving the show. I got pulled over right away. Really? Yeah. Why? So they had their eye on you out there? I think so. I mean, that's what we, I don't know. They just pulled us over right away. And what'd they find? Huh? What'd they find in the whip? Bullshit. shit. Some stuff. Yeah, mm. bullshit shit for me. And they didn't lock and you up, the, though? The thing is that they don't like you for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could think of a few things. But so what, they they just, they didn't lock you up again? Or, or oh, yeah. They did? I locked up. I came out on bail. Okay. I'm bailing down right away. And that, and that was the only thing that happened since you've been out? Or nah. you had another one as well? Yeah. What was that one? Same thing? Fucking, uh, this one was, they raided my pad, and then they found a... Uh huh. Thing in there, and then um, yeah, I'm fighting that shit right now. Right. Damn. That's crazy. And then it's like, I mean, I'll get into it later. But there was a situation the other day that sounded like it didn't even have anything to do with you. Oh yeah, and bullshit. Right. You feel like trouble just kind of follows you at a certain point, or what? I've been feeling like it sometimes for me. Like, damn. Like I'm cursed or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, fuck right. this shit. She don't stop. I can't get a break. Bro. Like it's just always bullshit back to back. Right. Does that make you just want to stay in the crib and just try to avoid all this shit that could potentially happen? I try to do that. For me, I try to do that, but you just gotta come out and just fucking. I gotta work. You feel me? I gotta move around. Hmm. Huh? Definitely. When did you start? Uh, decide. When did you decide you wanted to make music? Uh, I was sixteen. Okay. I was sixteen. I was in high school and shit. A couple of homies started rapping. I just wanted to, I, I want to try that shit out too. That shit, they were popping and shit like in the city. So I just, like, I started rapping. My shit started working and started popping more than the homie that first started rapping in the city. And it shit just went up. Damn. So who who influenced you? Just those guys? Or what were you listening to before that? Uh, What, what inspired me to rap, honestly, was like the 2016 rap. Hmm. 21 Savage, Kodak. 21 Savage, Kodak. Co that, that, that double XL cover. They yep. always say that was the last good double XL cover. Not for real. You seen the last one? The new one? The new one? Yeah. I'm not uh, super excited about ash. a large percentage of that cover. That's yeah. just ash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. You know, there's, yeah. there's some cool artists on there for sure, but there's definitely a lot where I'm like, nah, all right, nah. I don't got nothing against. Nah, I don't even want to say that shit there, man. Yeah, I know, right? Like, you just, I want to shit on it too, but I don't, don't, don't want to. There's definitely like, a few people I believe in. I really fuck with Babyface Ray. That's my number oh, yeah, one that sure. I was happy he was Baby on Babyface Ray and um, the, the Who on Shumma with Me. Mm, Narda Wick. Yeah, Narda Wick. Yeah. And then who else? There's like one more popping. But that's I mean, shit, that's shit, but shit. if you like street type rap, there's like two artists on that cover for you. There's three girls on that cover. Are there three popping girl rappers? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Seems like maybe kind of a stretch. They might have been trying a little too hard for the diversity requirement, but no white people this year. Hello. 
Maybe Tron. Maybe Tron. Baby Tron. What is he? He's something. I forget. He's something else. He ain't white though. I forget. Or maybe he is. He's, he's like not Mexican a, either, right? Nah. He can't. Uh, is he Mexican? I think he Baby might be Trump. some kind of Hispanic. I don't know. He but, go crazy though. He be going crazy. Nah, he's legit. Yeah, you gotta fuck with Baby Tron. Um, okay, but so then you start to get into it, um, and th- what what kind of views are you doing out the gate? Or like you're still in high school, right? So does this start to change how everybody's viewing you and shit? Yeah, well, fucking on, uh, like on SoundCloud. Like I was on SoundCloud. That was my first app, right? Like putting my mm-hmm. music. That shit was doing good. Uh, like good um plays for me, for me like thirty thousand was a lot like mm-hmm. in the city for me, which is the city everybody was fucking with me you were posting my shit so yeah so I got the the buzz right there right and so then you just like get mot like did you figure out everything yourself like you you were having to figure out video directors and studios or like like was there anybody who was kind of helping guide you into the game? Well, fucking I had shot a video that shit didn't do no numbers it's like ten k. 10k views like in nine months mm-hmm. she was doing the nothing then i dropped i did another video back to back that shit went up so after that like yeah i just it just started going up mm. and then everything i just got more into like everything and shit. do you feel like if you're putting dope shit on youtube that it'll just catch on or do you feel like you need to do promotional shit to make people find out about it and pay attention it depends. It just depends. They like how high you are. You feel me? Right. Like if it's some hot shit, if it's some hot shit, like it's just gonna go up. No promo type shit. Mm. I never really got promo on my shit. You weren't copping posts from Foods Gone Wild and shit. You know what? Well, I ain't gonna lie. I did. <laughs> you did cop one? <laughs> nah, not nah, Foods Gone Wild, but the food, uh, the food community. Okay. I fucking paid forty dollars for them to promote back to the bag. Forty for 40 the feed or for the story? For the feed. Forty. And that shit went up though. Oh, they fucking the game up, bro. That's like selling pussy for five dollars in the club. They can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's well, crazy. Yeah, Forty. Well, Damn. This I might have like to cop a post. Ago. Oh, two years ago. It was like two years ago. Is the food community and Foods Gone Wild owned by the same people or not? Nah. All right. Now I feel like an idiot. All right. Nah. <laughs> I was just assuming. <laughs> but that shit came through though. The food community, like that shit, got me a lot of followers. Right. Yeah. Nah, they're legit. They're, and they have, like, they get crazy engagement and all that shit. And they'll be posting about rappers that are, like, basically unknown and, like, a lot of views. Like, their audience is, like, straight up interested and just. It's not new. the same no more. This shit ain't the same no more. It's not? Nah. Okay. Would you recommend that, though, to a new artist coming out that they, like, spend money copping promo from shit like that? For sure. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to put in your money. You feel me? Like, you got to fucking. You got to pay for promo sometimes. Like, it's only right get your music out there you know yeah and you know what it is it's like if your shit is hot every dollar you spend on promo is going to give you a return on that investment if your shit is whack you could spend a million dollars on promo and ain't gonna do nothing yeah so it's like if once you get to the point that your shit actually is viral enough that when people see it they like it i mean that kind of changes the game yeah um okay so when did, did people from the beginning start telling you that you that you reminded them of kodak uh Nah, when I drop back to the bay, like that's when they started saying um, I sound like Kodak. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like you actually were genuinely like very influenced by him, or or how? For how did sure. That, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like shout out Kodak. Like that's that's all out. That's I only listen to Kodak. Like no other rapper. Like, really. Like 2018, 2019. Just right. Kodak, Kodak. But wow. I don't, I don't, I don't like try to sound like Kodak. For me, I, like, I like I try. It just, I guess, like, it's just my favorite rapper. She it just, it just comes out like that. It's interesting, though, because I've interviewed a shitload of rappers from Florida who realistically kind of look like Kodak, have their hair like Kodak, fucking rap sort of like Kodak, whatever. They only make a big deal about it with you just because you're Mexican and you're from L.A. So it's like a totally different voice, yeah. but doing the same thing. <laughs> or not the same thing, but a similar style, you know? Like the Mexican Kodak that shit funny. That shit you like that, or does that piss you off? I mean, it don't piss me off. It's just like whatever. I mean, he's one of the hottest rappers in the world. So, I mean, they're comparing me to him. It's like, you know, fuck it. You feel me? So, you know what I did? I DM'd him. I said, hey, I got an interview tomorrow with this kid. They call him the Mexican Kodak, yada, yada. I sent him a link to a video. I was like, I was wondering what you thought about it. Now, I wish that I could tell you that he gave me like a big, long fucking explanation of what he thought about it. But he did hit the double tap on the video. 
Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty good sign, uh, you know? That's crazy. And I did send this to him at, like, 3 in the morning, too. So, realistically, he, he was probably in a very different state of mind <laughs> that wasn't, like, really down to watch a new music Damn. video. But I still just wanted to, you know, I feel like the double tap is a good sign. Nah, that's dope. Hell yeah. Thank you for that. No cap. No, no doubt. I just, you know. Shout I, out Kodak, though. I mean, fuck. That would just be crazy as shit. Because Kodak, I mean, he ain't really, that's like, dope. been yeah. out in L.A. like that. You know, like, I, I, if I saw a video of Kodak in your neighborhood doing a video, I would crazy. lose my fucking mind. That would be the coolest shit ever. That would be hard, huh? We got to make that happen. He was, he was here He was here fucking with uh, Swifty. Oh, yeah? He was fucking with Swifty. They're in the studio. Oh, Swifty wow. took him to uh, his hood. Swifty took him to his hood. Shot Swifty. Oh, I didn't even know that. He pulled up to his hood. He was right there with his homies at the studio. They were calling me and shit. I was... I was in a lean, lean coma. Oh, man. They were blowing on my phone. I had like 30 minutes calls. I woke up like, hey, I got a text like, Kodak's here. What the fuck? They said, hey, they sent me the Addy. Pull up, pull up. I woke up like, fuck. Like, I missed out. But That's the it. worst feeling. Your whole yeah. day just gets eaten up. Yeah, but I was like, fuck it up. It will happen. Right. That's, but I'm like, fuck. I don't know how he's going to go about it because I know he's like, he got a lot of pride and shit. He'd probably be like, man, fuck that nigga. He's trying to sound like me or some shit. You me? I yeah, know. and I was thinking about that. Like, if he if he had said, like, nah, fuck him, I was like, am I going to tell him or am I going to just act like I didn't even send it to him? Because I would feel like a dick telling you that if he actually did say yeah, something imagine. like that. Fuck. <laughs> I was just dissing right back. Because he just seems crazy enough that he could almost do anything. You know, yeah. like, you never really know what the fuck Kodak's going to I knew that when I seen the video of him smacking his mom's ass dancing. I was like, this is a wild boy right here. He, anything is possible with him. Boy, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> not to bring up old crazy. shit. Um, all right. So, uh, I guess. Spark this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get hot. Oh, so they don't, they don't test you for that anymore, right? Nah. They just be tripping like, like coke and fucking lean for sure, pills and shit. Right. So is that a big part of you stopping doing, doing that lean too, and low shit? Key, low key, yeah. I be trying to be just clean, just trying to be clean and pass all my drug tests so I can get off this shit. Right. You know? Definitely. So they were telling, so is Peso, like, do you look at him like a little brother or like, what, what's the relationship like there? Shit, bro. Yeah, just, you know, the younger homie, feel me? A little homie, like, feel me? Just the brother, bro, you feel me? Like, just brother, nigga. Like, you guys going through a lot of the same shit too because he's locked up right now. Yeah. Right. I just talked to him too. Free peso, man. Yeah, shit. free him, man. That's yeah. actually honestly one of the bigger interviews, like from a, a new LA artist. That's probably one of the biggest interviews we dropped like this year or last year, whenever it came out. Oh yeah, that shit did numbers. Yeah. Hell yeah. I really nigga, love um, him. He's about to come out though. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna do that much time. He's gonna be out. The other similarity about you two too is that you're both from LA, but doesn't sound that much like traditional L.A. rap, which I think is kind of probably a good thing for the new generation of kids. I feel like they like stuff that doesn't sound necessarily super L.A. Like, is that a concern you ever thought about? Like, I don't know, just a lot of L.A. rappers, the shit sounds so L.A. Yeah, fucking, uh, I, I be saying, um, I don't want to just, like, stay in the L.A. way, for me. I be saying, like, we want to go fucking mainstream, like, where... We get listened to like, everywhere, like we, fucking, we're not trying to be known as a L.A. rappers. I mean, we mm. L.A. rappers, but we just not trying to be in that little like, right, that little, you um, know, Roddy Rich. Sometimes you might be able to feel it a little bit, but it's like he's he's probably the biggest young rapper out of L.A. right now, and it's not like you're fucking hearing him sound like he's on some G Funk shit or whatever. I yeah, mean, he went he went mainstream with it. You yeah, know? he just sounds different. Like he's from somewhere else. He don't even sound like he's from L.A. So right, shit, they good. Definitely. Was Shoreline an inspiration before you started rapping, or, or were you into that? Um, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, probably. Yeah, like fucking um, that shit's like that was like the wave. So mm. I was listening to it for me. Right. But I got, I got inspired too by uh, Made in Tokyo. Oh really? Yeah, like on some random shit. It's cause I went to his show. I went to his show at the Novo. I remember I was at that show. Yeah, if it's it the one I'm thinking of. Five dollar ticket. Five dollar ticket. Yes. No cap. I was there. And Made in Tokyo got mad at me because a girl passed out in the fucking pit or whatever, and like everybody was like all swarming around, right? And like I just took a photo, but my flash went off, so everybody fucking looked back at me. Yeah. And then Made in Tokyo was pissed off that I took that photo. And in retrospect. <laughs> That is kind of like, you know, if somebody passes out as a show, you know, you maybe don't want to highlight that or whatever. But then also, I mean, what what the fuck? Like, I'm here to fucking film the show. You're going to be mad at me for showing what actually happened? Uh, yeah, that's crazy, though. Hey, shout out, man, Tokyo. Like, like, after I went to that show, 
I, I got inspired, like, for real. Like, I'm like, damn, I'm trying to be up there. Yeah. For me. For sure. So you just, what, get to work? You just you start recording in a real studio or you start recording in the crib? I recorded in the crib. I used to record in my closet. I used to record myself. Mm. Okay, I used to record myself. And uh, then after that, just uh, the homie had a studio and I just went to that new studio. And, yeah. Right. Definitely. Is it a situation where, like, people start trying to sort of sign you or swoop you up or manage you or whatever right away when they see you, you have some buzz going? Hell yeah. A couple people, like, reached out. Couple people reached out right away, right. But I got locked up. And then I got locked up. But I was already. I signed right. I signed right. Low key, I signed right away. You oh, so you signed to Atlantic right away? Yeah, like right away when when the, back to a bad, back to a bad didn't even have a million views. Right. You think you signed too early, or you think it was a good idea? It's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shout out, shout out, Gary. He's right here. No cap. Made it happen. Oh, okay. So he's from Atlantic. Yeah. Oh, I understand. So when I called him out for the PlayStation 2 hoodie, you got kind of worried? Like, don't nah. don't talk bad to the label, man. <laughs> I actually thought it was a cool ass hoodie. I'm like, the fuck? Like that's that's such a random system to have a hoodie for? Nah, shout out shout out Gary, man. He made it happen. Look, he asked why I'm right here, type shit. Shout out Gary, man. I, I need that hoodie. Um Okay, but so so you sign Atlantic and like how does that like do they start kind of having opinions about your music? They start putting you with producers, like what kind of changes after that? Yeah, like signing. Signing right away, um, for sure they started bringing me around like bigger studios and bigger producers and shit. All that shit was new to me. That shit cool. Like damn, mm. I me, mean, nigga came from nothing. And, like seeing all that shit. So right away when I signed, yeah, shit was different. But I got locked up. I'm telling you, I was only out signed for like two weeks. Uh huh. Then I got locked up. And so were they, were they helping with the legal shit at all? Like they help you try because it's obviously in their best interest to help you get out as fast as possible, yeah. right? Nah, it's because the thing is that I was fighting this case already. Okay, so they kind of knew this was a thing. Yeah, so I was already fighting this case, and right before I signed to him, like, like I need to turn myself in, like in two weeks. You know. So you told shit. him because I feel like a lot of people they try to not tell the label that. No, I told him, yeah, like you know, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm gonna turn myself in. I'll be back, like you know, mm -hmm. but shit, yeah. Right. They just still wanted to sign me. Okay, you don't feel like they kind of lost interest while you were gone, or? They were still like ready to help you get back into it as soon as you got out. Fuck. Uh, you know when you're like there, you just start thinking on gang and shit. I'm like, fuck, they probably, mm. you know. But nah, hell no. Nah, I was like, it's whatever I do with it, you know. Mm. Whatever I do with the buzz, whatever I do with the name. Right. I just gotta go hard. I just, I just gotta keep going hard. Right. Yeah. You feel like you're competing with Peso and Swifty and shit. Nah, hell no. Nah. It's just all supportive vibes because yeah. you guys been doing some some big shows together and shit like that. Yeah, man, we just fucking we try to support each other for me. Right, definitely. No competition. Yeah, there was a thing like a tweet going around the other day that was basically saying that people outside of LA don't listen to LA music. Do you feel like there's truth to that, or do you feel like that's that's cap? Uh. There is kind of some truth in that, but at the same time, like some of us do get listened to out, and that's the I go that goes back to me saying we gotta fucking make music like just out of the LA sound type shit for me. Mm. Like, but yeah, because I don't feel like Shoreline was held back like that. I mean, maybe they were to a certain extent, but I feel like they definitely broke through, had a lot of fans from all over the country and shit. Yeah, shit, throwing shows out out of LA and they be cracking. Right. Have you mostly just toured on the West Coast, or you managed to get anywhere else? Mm, I went on tour with Phoenix. Shout out Phoenix. Oh, nice. I went on tour with him last year, but we it was like what? That's still Cali, though, right? Yeah, that's still Cali. Like I went just up the Bay. Mm -hmm. That's like the farthest I've been type shit or Texas. How are the fans up there? Mm, I was I was low key like a little. I was low key a little. I got bigger ever since then, so I feel like now it'd be crazier. Mm. But they knew me. Right. Like, everywhere and shit. How'd it feel, though, like, selling out the fucking Novo? Like, that must have been pretty wild to just know that in your, your home city that you could do those kind of numbers and really bring that many people out. We're about to cancel that shit. <laughs> you no. were going to cancel it? Yeah. Why? Because I got locked up. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, I just, I had, I got locked up around that time, too, barely. Hmm. And um, I got released. But when, when, when I was in there, I was like, fuck, like, we might have to cancel the show. I was telling everybody and everybody like, fuck, like we, we gotta see, we gotta get you out of there. We're not gonna cancel it till we know. Mm -hmm. 
And then shit, I just came out and did that shit the, 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 like that. Next weekend, and yeah, shit. We, that, that must have been a pretty crazy contrast to go from behind bars to turning up in front of that many people, getting paid to do your thing. It's crazy, dog, but you feel me? That shit was dope, dog, the Novo, feel me? Right. Not a lot of people can even bring as many as people like that. Like, niggas can't even bring that many people out. No, 100%. At the Novo. Yeah, definitely. Everybody well, be claiming LA is theirs and I don't know what. <laughs> they can't even do that. Right. Huh? What, uh, when 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 you were locked up, how did how's the treatment? Like, as somebody who's pretty fucking well known out here at this point do you feel like people wanted to test you or is it a lot of love it's a lot of love mm -hmm. it's a lot of love a lot of haters too but it's a lot of love a lot of haters lot so of you haters. have to run some fades in there yeah couple, you know a couple okay you know want some lost some i ain't gonna lie right i mean but regular right yeah you comfortable in there or do you fucking hate every second of it shit you gotta get comfortable right it can't be all like y'all uh, I mean, I like fuck jail for me. I be saying fuck jail. Like I don't want to go back, but fucking um, yeah. When you in there, you just you gotta just you know keep your head up, chest up. Feel me? Right. I ain't saying I'm a tough ass nigga. Nah, I hate that shit, dog. You feel me? I want to be out here, but yeah, shit's cool. Mhm. Mm for me, it's cool. What uh, what were you doing to keep yourself busy in there? Um, uh, I was working out. Really? Yeah. Well. I got skinny now and shit, but when I came out, I came out looking good and all that. Really? Yeah. You were kind of jacked? You were doing a thing about your music career or you were thinking about your next fade? <laughs> shit, nah, just, <laughs> just just trying to get fit. Just, I don't know, just trying to waste time, like you said. Just, right. I was just wasting time. Just, I didn't really do much. Can you work I, on the music in there? or? Nah, I didn't, I didn't write nothing in jail. Really? I wrote like five verses. Mm. I had a whole notebook. I only wrote like five verses. I, didn't, I just, in jail, like you can't even concentrate, like. I couldn't concentrate to write. It's crazy because other, for other 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 fools, it's like, like niggas when they go to jail, they write a gang. But me, I just couldn't write in there. Mm. You didn't feel inspired. I just didn't feel inspired. I needed to hear a beat to rap, you know. And I mean, think about the average rapper is in their fucking environment. They got their girls around. They got their drugs. They got their weed. Whatever the fuck it is in the studio, it's like the the whole point of being a rapper is to like set the tone so much that you make music that really expresses like you just feeling confident and shit and when you're fucking locked up and you got some guard telling you what to do every minute of the day it could, I, I would imagine it would be kind of hard to get into that mentality yeah that shit bust you. but i remember draco telling me that like he he he's learned or he learned back then that when you come out of prison, nobody wants to hear you fucking talk about prison. So he didn't want to like come out rapping about that shit because he felt like people aren't trying to hear that. You feel like that? Shit. Mm. It's like when you when you just come out of jail, like it's all like you think about that shit a lot. You're mm. just gonna talk about it though. You know? And that's kind of the question though. Like, what's more important, like talking about what's actually on your mind or saying some cool shit that the people are gonna fuck with? I don't, I don't know. Shit. I think you gotta just talk about jail in a cool way, right? You gotta like yeah. say say some cool slick shit, but you can't be writing like a whole song about your fucking demons haunting you in the cell, right? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right. Nah, nah. It's just all, all gang shit. So all, a lot of stories in jail. Right. How's your mom feel about your success? Happy for me. Happy. Loki, she don't really like it. Like she don't really like it. Really. She do, but then she don't. Like, it comes with a lot of bullshit. Right. So she sees that, you know what I mean? I mean, she probably, like, is it the content? Is the fact that she sees you out here acting crazy on songs and shit? Is she, she gets worried about it? It's like, fuck. You know, it's just, for rappers, that shit just get tricky sometimes. Like, when you really, like, when you really deep in, she just get tricky, so. Yeah. I mean. She ever watch the videos and be like, why the fuck are there so many guns in this video? Nah, she don't chip like that. <laughs> For real? Nah, nah, she don't chip like that, nah. That'd be the number one thing that I would expect moms to be <sighs> feeling some type of way about. Nah, she don't chip. Nah, she. Okay. She's oh. regular, so yes. Yeah, but she, she fucks with it, though. Like, then she's happy for me, for me. Right. I just want to just make it bigger, though. Like, fuck it. I'm, I haven't done, I feel like I haven't done really much. So I got to just blow up and fucking become a millionaire already. Mm, that's the goal? Yeah, just... Take it to the next level. Mm. Um, your mom was pissed off about the the rose on your face. 
uh, a little bit, but not really. Really? Did she get mad about any of the other ones, like the thing in your throat? <sighs> nah, not really. Like, she be she don't like them, but then like she just gets like over it quick. Right. Yeah. She don't like them though. She be like, damn, why you do that? But she just gets over them quick. Like, right. she don't really trip like that. You got a girl? Huh? You got a girl? Yeah. So you're not able to enjoy all the the pussy that comes with rap stardom? Uh, nah. Nah? You locked down? Yeah. Good man. You never cheated? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, That's man. Crazy. Come how on. You gonna, how, you gonna ask, how you gonna ask me that, bro? <laughs> like, you gotta cut that out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's a good answer. Hey, you gotta cut that out. <laughs> but, well, I mean, all right. Yeah, so, I got a girl though, man. Yeah, I got a girl. Are you somebody who could be single, or you feel like you always need to be in a relationship? I'd be saying, I don't want to say the wrong thing. My girl's gonna be tripping. <laughs> you got one of them types of girls? I guess, yeah. Damn. Nah, we're straight though. Yeah, we're cool. We're chilling, but fucking um. You said what again? Who's more strict, your parole officer or your girl? Is that a similar vibe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I seen this clip of Wax saying that he would be, basically he wouldn't be able to sign a Mexican rapper because basically at first everybody was confused. Everybody was thinking that he just said, like, you don't fuck with Mexican people or some shit. But then his description of it later on he kind of fleshed it out a little bit more it sounded more like the politics of shit within that community is something that for him he doesn't necessarily want to get involved with because it could be so serious what do you think of that he's a smart man <laughs> for real still you gotta stay away from all this shit really you get deep so that's like a no-brainer to you you're not surprised to hear that at all nah for me not nah, hell nah Shit, like, I know, I remember, I remember seeing that post, too. Mm. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, we hard, too, you feel me? But, right. But fucking, nah, I just, when you put it like that about the whole street politics shit, yeah, it's, it's deep, so, fuck you, you feel me? You mm. don't want to deal with none of that. Right. It's cool, like, you know? Mm. I feel you. Um, but, so, do you, do you, when you blew up, when you started really getting all this attention, did that kind of become a thing? That all of a sudden everybody really wants to understand exactly who you're associated with? So that, and you know, does that become more of an issue? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It becomes an issue, yeah. But yeah. Okay. For sure. How important is the fashion and the drip in this whole thing? Shit. I just be trying to be fly a little bit, you know, but. Right. I ain't the flies yet, but when I'm when I, when I become a millionaire, I'll be the flies nigga on earth. Mm. You think you could be a popping rapper <laughs> these days and just rock a pro club? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I guess Duno's doing it, right? Yeah. I still rock pro clubs, but okay. You don't got to do designer and shit like to make it this in this day and age. Fuck no. When you a nigga, you you still you still fucking a pro club. Right. No okay. cap. Did you see the story that came out the other day that said that there's a L.A. drill rapper who got killed in the Bronx in a pharmacy? This dude, Money Gang, Vonte. This is like the weirdest headline I ever seen because I didn't heard of him. And I'm like, there's drill rappers from L.A.? Shit, I, I never heard of him. I never heard of him. Okay. R.I.P., but no. Are there drill rappers in L.A.? Have you ever heard of this? Never heard of that either. <laughs> right. But then, bro, they did him dirty. They ran down him in the pharmacy in the Bronx and just fucking tried to take his money from him. He wouldn't give it up, so they just killed him. And this video of it and everything. Just random. Just had, to, had to bring that up. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. I noticed that uh, one of Ralphie the Plug's biggest songs, or one of the top songs on your, your shit on Spotify or whatever, it was like your song that you did with Ralphie. How'd you meet Ralphie? I met Ralphie... Uh Shout out Ravi too, he be showing love and shit. Like Draco too. Draco showed love too. Mm. R.I.P. Draco. R.I.P. Showed love when he was here. He fuck with me. Um, that's how I met him. I just met Draco. For me, invited me to the studio. I put uh Ravi was there and just yeah. Mm. Cool as fuck. Definitely. Who else uh you really fuck with that you would want to actually do music with in in the long run? Mm. 
Sean went with Kodak one time for the one time. Mm. And um, not really a lot. Let me see, who could I? It's like, well, that's crazy because I be thinking about these questions like when I'm not getting interviewed, when I'm getting interviewed, I can't even, I forget like for who I want to work with. But it's a couple, couple of who's I want to work with though. I mean, you and Kodak are both on Atlantic. If you put out an album, it seems like they could probably help make that happen, right? Yeah. My first album about to drop next month, so hopefully after that, a lot of shit changed too. You don't got any ideas about who's who's on it? You, you got any features planned? We got some good features. Rafi on there for sure too. Nice. Yeah, but good features. Good features. Nice. Five dollar sign shit. So okay, what what happened the other night? You you went and performed the show at a party, right? Yeah. And was everything normal throughout the course of the party? When I was there, we was straight. We just went. Performed, got up out of there. Right. And then, yeah, I just I was going home and I just got a call like, hey, good thing you left. Woo -woo -woo. There was a shooting. Woo -woo -woo. People crying in the back. A whole lot of mess. And then, then I seen the, and then a couple people told me that like, damn, good thing you left. Woo -woo -woo. Like a shooting. Then I woke up the next morning. I'm on the news and shit. Right, because they want to use your name to make it sound more interesting to I, the people. I guess, yeah. Like, rapper Money Sign Sway had a party right here. Woo, woo, nah, hell no, nah, I just got paid to go perform and some shit cracked when I was, you know, some I can't control everybody for me. That shit just cracked there. So you had been gone for a while by the time the shit happened? Yeah, like 20, 30 minutes out. Right. You didn't hear anything about, uh, like, what happened? Or have you heard anything? No. Nah. Damn. It's crazy. It's crazy though. R.I.P. Like, feel me? Like, that's just crazy. Like, uh, it could have been my fans. Mm. It's dangerous being outside these days, man, because, I mean, if you had just kicked it for another half hour and decided to just hang out at the fucking show, then who knows what could have happened, you know? Thank God. It's always like in the show, like, some shit cracks. Like, it gets active. Mm. So I just be trying to be, go to a fucking show in and out. Like right. I, I just go perform and I'm out of there. Right. What was this dude who uh he had a video that's on YouTube and stuff where he was claiming that he took your chain? Yeah. yeah. What, what was that situation? Bullshit. Cat. He was lying? Yeah, cat. Really? Yeah. Wow. Niggas ain't never snatched my chain. Like, niggas could put it on their mom. Their mom's gonna die. Like, nigga. Niggas ain't never snatched my chain. But they be capping, like, they be trying to play with my name and shit, but, yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, you're you're an easy opportunity to get clout for a lot of people who want to just. I think that's what they want. They want clout, but I don't really dress it, like, I don't really put it out there. I don't want to get nobody clout, like, type shit, like, fuck them. Right. I know, we know the truth, like, niggas around me know the truth, like, for me. Niggas, niggas, niggas know, for me. Niggas ain't never snatched nothing from me, so, yeah. Respect. Um, okay, so what do you uh, have coming up? Anything we should know about besides just this album coming soon? Shit, we got this album. I'm just, I'm just happy for this tape. I never dropped the tape before. Mm. I never dropped the tape. I sold out the Nova without no tape. I mean, the Roxy twice in a day without no tape. You like, don't count that tape that's on uh, Spotify that I was listening to earlier? Nah, because I was all singles. I was already out. Oh, like, okay. We just barely put that together. That's like, just a collection of singles. Okay. Yeah, for me, that was already out. Right. That's how I went. That's how I'm known everywhere because of these singles. I never done the tape, so I can't wait to drop my first tape. Definitely. Shit about to change shit. I feel like it's going to go up. It's crazy. It's dope. Definitely, for sure. How'd you get the name Suede? I used to tag. Ah. Uh, I used to tag and shit, so I got my name. Like, all my homies started tagging. Everybody had a name. I'm like, damn, I want to start tagging too. Like, the homie, like, fuck it. Like, mm, regular shit for me. Right. I didn't have a name. I remember my name was like, Slim at first. Mm. <laughs> and then, like, I'm like, nah, Slim ain't it, nah. And then I, like, I remember I had some Puma suede. I seen them, like, when I was in class trying to look for shit and, like, the little bugs and all that shit, like, the, the fucking posters and shit. Mm. I looked down, I seen suede on my shoes. I'm like, nigga, fuck, I'm going to start taking suede. Boom, ever since then, like, I, I just started, hey, they call me suede, woo woo so mm. you, just stay did, with that name. Did you totally stop tagging at a certain point or you still fuck with it a little bit? Nah, I stopped saying already. Okay. Yeah. Were you nicer than OJZ? Nah. He's nicer. Yeah, His he, shit's hard. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, he's pretty nice. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I was never really like a tagger, a tagger like that either. Like I wouldn't go tag on trains and none of that crazy shit. Nah. As far as I know, OJZ definitely by far in the history of rap music is the nicest graffiti artist slash rapper. As far as I know. 
I've never seen another rapper who I thought was as nice as him. But I might be thinking. Man, that, he got some good steel on. There's probably <laughs> some some dudes back in the day that were pretty nice for their era, but I'm not really sure. Duno out here doing his thing. Yeah. Allegedly. Previously. In homies, the past, a long time ago. I just be telling the homies I know how to tag, put my shit up, fucking nigga, you know. Right. I don't know, I really know how to tag like that, man. Mm. Like good. Yeah. When I see those fucking uh shit on the overpass, on the signs and everything. Yeah. I'm like, bro, these dudes are out of their fucking minds. Because I mean, you're looking up. I'm almost getting an accident looking up. It's like a one-foot ledge that they're fucking standing on to do that shit. I don't get it, but much that respect. Shit, like, people love graffiti. Like, they, they see that shit, like, a lot, you know what I'm saying? Right. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, appreciate you coming on, man. They've been waiting for it for a minute. Money signs swayed. Yeah, yeah, bro. Thank you for having me, though. My boy. Appreciate it's a pleasure you. pleasure to be here for me. For sure. Shot, baby. Everybody, keep an eye tap out. Tap in, tap in. For his new Two. shit dropping. Man, totally one. I need all that. Wow. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Facebook, all that shit. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com. Go Celtics. Gang.